I'm Kristen Brzezowski, the executive editor of World Screen, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Jane Seymour, all about the new series, Harry Wilde. Hi, Jane. Hi there. This is such a pleasure, and I'd love to hear what was it that attracted you to the show and this role? Well, I read the script, and uh, as we all know, there aren't that many really great roles for women of a certain age. In fact, for most actresses, the whole thing's over by the time you're 40, and I'm 70. So I read this, and I went, wow, I love this character because, you know, a woman who's lived that long, and, a, you know, there, there's so much more, you know, and... And, you know, she's not a retiring woman. You know, she, she's a, a professor. She's smart. She's edgy. She's a tough cookie. If she doesn't like something or doesn't like someone or doesn't approve of what someone says, she says it like she, she's completely unfiltered. And she's um, also not afraid to, you know, check out, find the bad guys. I mean, she realizes that she has this ability to be a pretty good sleuth based on her knowledge of literature and, and history. And um, so long as she has her sidekick, this 15 year old kid who grew up on the other side of the tracks, um, you know, she's in good shape. Fantastic. And let's dig a little more into the nuances of this character. Uh, what is she like beneath the surface? Well, she is, um, she's very independent. I mean, I don't think anyone actually told her there were rules about how to be a woman. I think she just, you know, she she behaves just like the men at the pub and, um, you know, she'll buy her own drinks um, invariably has to buy everybody else's as well. If she sees a man she wants to snog, she will. Um, if she needs a, a weapon, she'll ask a guy who knows a guy and get a weapon. Of course, she only gets a stun gun. We're not talking anything terribly interesting or useful. Um, and uh, she she's always correcting people. So because she loves English literature and grammar so much, it's ingrained in her. She just can't stop teaching. She'll find a teaching moment in the middle of being either pursued by, in danger of her life, or chasing after a criminal. And so what I really love is, is the humor. She also likes way too much red wine. Um, she does have hangovers. She doesn't have time for hair and makeup and all that kind of stuff, or clothes. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's uh, jeans, a sweater, a you know, a, a leather jacket or a raincoat and uh, she'll just shove her hair up and put a pencil in it. And that's good. Um, she's not necessarily that good at, at the computer. So it's a good thing she's got a younger person with her. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, I think to me, I had to ask myself, I wonder how many women after two years of COVID and working from home, ask themselves in the mirror, hmm, is this what I really want to do? Or do I maybe want to be something different? Or maybe do I want a different experience in life? And I think I'm hearing that from a lot of people. That's why I think the link here to all generations, because basically this is not just about Harry, you know, it's Harry's son and daughter-in-law and granddaughter. There's three generations. So you've got the teenager, the overbearing um, mother or daughter-in-law, the, the son who is not as smart at sleuthing as he's supposed to be because he is a detective, but his mother seems to keep solving the crimes, which is very embarrassing. And a mother who you know has a habit of uh, coming on to his superiors and having affairs. Um, so, you know, I think um, it's going to be very appealing to a lot of different age groups, but especially, especially to women about being an independent woman. And why was now the perfect time to return to television for you? The reason I loved, um, I love going back to television is I think some of the best work that is being done today, both in terms of what's being written, directed and acted is happening on streaming channels. And I think more than ever, one of the upsides of COVID was that we all got to binge everything. You know, we couldn't go to the theaters. Um, and so I think, you know, we all got to, to see that, that different networks and different streaming channels had different fare for different people. And, you know, whereas in, in the old days, you'd have one or two channels or four, five channels, or I don't know how many channels we now have. 
um, you know, you start watching a lot of commercials, but this way you can find your genre, what you love. And with Acorn, it's brilliant because these are all the wonderful English and Irish and, you know, Australian, New Zealand, and a whole bunch of shows you wouldn't normally necessarily see in America. And there they are for you to watch without any interruption. And I'd love to hear in your view, how are the roles now for strong female leads nowadays compared to when you first began in television and how much work is there still to go? Well, I mean, obviously there's not much work for, uh, I mean, most, most movies and television are based on a much younger demographic, obviously. I mean, you know, you're, once you start playing mothers at 30, you know, <laughs> they don't even wait around for you to play grandma. They're not interested. Grandma is usually a tiny role that may or may not be seen and is usually um, either annoying or senile. Um, I think it's wonderful that I've managed to get these amazing roles now. And I know from my agent and from, you know, my fellow actresses, I mean, most of them have pretty much retired. Um, or are wishing they could get a gig somewhere doing something. And for some reason, I have been touching a lot of wood here, very, very fortunate. I've had some great roles and I've got a bunch of them all lined up, ready to go. So, and I think it's because I'm not afraid to look old and play old. I'm not trying to be uh, something that I'm not. Um, you know, I've, I've, my wrinkles are in full view. So when I frown or cry or whatever, you know, my, my face actually does move and scrunch up. And, uh, and, you know, if I play bet and be positive, which I've just been doing, um, you know, I'm playing an 85 year old with, you know, like we just draw all the wrinkles all over me and take all the makeup off, put gray hair on and silly wigs and act it. And, uh, you know, it, it's really fun. There's, there's an enormous amount of material that I don't think has even been touched yet about what life is like after 50. And, uh, I think whereas a, when I was growing up and my mother was 50, I kind of looked at her and I thought, oh, well, you know, she's an old lady now. But she actually lived on very feistily to the age of 92. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, she had many, you know, compromises health-wise and then, you know, had gone through the war and camp and stuff like that. So um, I, I think, the material where you see all three generations is very valuable because, you know, you never, you're either a mother or a grandmother or a child. You are one of those as a woman at some point, if you're lucky. And in terms of this show, was executive producing something that you know you wanted to do right from the start? Oh, I've been producing a whole bunch of other things in the past as well. But yes, on this one, because um, they wanted my input. They wanted my input on script, on casting. Um, but, you know, they every, everything that they showed me, I just went, yes. And we all agreed. So, you know, I, I can't say it was very taxing. Um, but the, the fun part was that, you know, if I wanted to, um, in a scene and I wanted the director to do another take and, and, and have the actor I was working with do my idea of fun, which is called a freebie, which is when we know we've got it. And now, you know, you get to like throw it upside down and backwards and just see if you find anything else, you know, and get just go a little bit crazy with it and just fly. And every time we did that, either I did or some of the other actors would, the director would look at me and go, wow, that was amazing. Oh my gosh, where was that? And I said, well, that's what you do to actors. Once you said, you know, good job, good job, we got it. And now you say, you know, did you maybe leave something behind? Because if you did, you know, feel free to throw it out there. And that's the, the freebie culture, I call it. Jane, this has been wonderful. And the show looks so fun. So congratulations and thank you again for talking with us. Thank you.